Hello, I am Bonnie Wood of Keeping New York History Alive, and this is Stories of the Past, Shookville, a Deserted Village. If you wander the winding roads of Milan in Upper Dutchess County, New York, you may miss the hamlet of Shookville on Shookville Road in the blink of an eye. The walls and foundation of the old stone church remain to mark the center of the long forgotten community. And this stone plaque is displayed near the town historian's office in the Milan Town Hall. Although little of Shookville remains, the articles, journals, and stray thoughts of unofficial local historian and writer Burton Kuhn, 1869 to 1942, remain to tell the story of its past. In Shookville, then and now, published in the Rhinebeck Gazette, he writes, Kate April's house and garden and the loom that wove such rugged tapestry have long since disappeared and only a hedge of tansy and a few clumps of bouncing bet have survived the change. Little David Doyle and Jenny Kramer would look in vain for the little picket gate in the stone wall and the shrubs on either side of the stone walk leading to the house and grapevine and the little garden with its pinks and sweet William and lavender. Many a bouquet did Mother Doyle pick from this yard and bring to church on a Sunday afternoon, an offering for God's altar. And Gilbert Myers will remember the old home with overshadowing plum trees, white in the springtime, and the little barn where the cow and chickens were kept, and the hayloft where he used to dream of the days to come and their possible fruitage. Near the remains of the old stone church, the gravestones of many Shookville residents still stand and tell another story of this deserted village. Burton Coon's parents, as well as his father, William Coon, three children and a first wife, lost in the space of three years, 1863 to 1865, from smallpox and then diphtheria, are buried within the black iron fence. How many others in the hamlet suffered the same fate? William Coon documented his grief in his journal. He described how his teenage daughter Jemima who was very fond of the little five-year-old daughter of Philip and Charlotte Cooperneal, was determined to visit the sickly child. Jemima and the child both died from diphtheria within days of each other, September 1865, and they're buried inside the iron fence in the old Shookville Cemetery, the little one at the feet of the older one, so they are together there in death. At the top of the little one's stone is a figure of a broken rosebud, and underneath her name and age are the words, go with me, her friend went. What more can we discover about Shookville? Deserted village. The story can be remembered and retold. The beauty can still be experienced. Slow down, don't blink, take a stroll, or a bike ride and explore the magnificence of nature and feel the history all around. We can still imagine the community gathering at church socials, the children playing in the orchard and going to a one room schoolhouse, the farmer plowing the field, the farmer's wife picking vegetables in her kitchen garden, a quiet, yet active time, a hard yet cherished life. Let's end with Burton Coon's closing words in his article, Shookville, Past and Present. Surely we have here a deserted village. Would that some writer with more genius than I have might describe it and tell its story. For these plain people have served their day and generation and made history as certainly as any people anywhere I have long wanted to do them justice, and if I have failed, it is only because I could not do any better. I thank the Gazette for this opportunity.